Often, it's those common everyday items that surprise us the most. Classic household staples that we take for granted and don't give a second thought to. But behind those nostalgic labels, they've got hidden properties that extend their usefulness beyond what we thought possible. And the king of those items is baking soda. Also known as sodium bicarbonate, baking soda is a popular cooking, baking, and cleaning agent used in homes around the world. Well, today, I'm going to show you seven uses for this amazing compound just in the garden. And by the end, we may just never look at baking soda the same way ever again. Whenever we use something new in the garden, even a common household item like baking soda, we gotta make sure that it's safe for our plants, our soil, and beyond. Fortunately, baking soda is safe, natural, and it readily breaks down. It's why we can brush our teeth with, or even eat this stuff, no problem. But as we know, you can always have too much of a good thing, and too much baking soda is a problem. Too much baking soda localized in your garden can definitely have adverse effects, and two of them immediately stand out. Baking soda is alkaline, or basic, with a pH of about 8. Most of our garden plants love to live in that 6-7 to seven range of slightly acidic to neutral. Take them too far out of their comfort zone for too long, and you're going to have issues. The other thing to watch out for is salinity. Baking soda is NaH. CO3, which is a sodium, a hydrogen, and a bicarbonate. Any baking soda that you put in the soil is eventually going to break down, and those sodium ions are going to be released. Most soils have small amounts, and this does nothing. Leach in large amounts, though, well, that does a lot. Excess sodium in your soil is going to displace nutrient ions that are necessary for the plant to live such as potassium and phosphorus. Very quickly, you're going to get deficiencies. On top of that, sodium at high levels is better at grabbing water molecules than stressed out plant roots are. This is going to further damage or even kill your plants by this point. So, baking soda can be useful, but we got to be careful. Our first use for baking soda in the garden is safe at any strength, and that's to clean our tools. For me, I like to clean my tools at the end of every season, and baking soda is a big part of that. In conjunction with vinegar, it gets my tools spick and span, even after a year of heavy use. Vinegar is an acid, and it's great at removing rust all on its own. Baking soda, however, works as a safe, mild abrasive to really clean up that grime. Once most of that loose rust is off the tools, I make a paste out of the baking soda and get scrubbing. Easy stuff. The second way to use baking soda in the garden is as a natural insecticide. Baking soda, either on contact or when ingested by pests, is going to give off carbon dioxide, asphyxiating them almost immediately. Safe for your plants, safe for your soil, safe for your pests, safe for you, but quite effective at containing pests. To make a homemade spray, it's quite easy. Mix one liter of water with one tablespoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of natural unscented soap, and two tablespoons of vegetable oil. The soap is going to double down on the insecticidal properties and the vegetable oil is going to act as a spreader sticker. Really effective stuff that's completely safe. For the third use of baking soda in our garden, you can take that exact same spray at the exact same concentrations, only this time use it as a fungicide. Same ingredients, same ratios. If your zucchinis, squash, and other big leaf veggies are prone to powdery mildew every year, well, 
The alkaline nature of a baking soda spray could work wonders in preventing an outbreak. Spray the leaves weekly as a preventative measure and your powdery mildew problems could be a thing of the past. Hey, for a complete breakdown and in-depth video on this spray, check out the video in the top right corner. This next use of baking soda is one that we got to be really careful with, and that's as a weed killer. Like we said, large amounts of sodium in the soil are going to kill any plant, even weeds. But we need to be careful about the surrounding area. And that's the trick with baking soda as a weed killer. At no point do we ever want to over salt our beds or garden soils. And as a weed killer, Baking soda is almost impossible to keep localized. So, for use in the garden, amongst your plants, amongst your crops, I strongly recommend against it. But for pathways, sidewalks, and other areas, I'm definitely picking baking soda over a chemical application any day of the week. Okay, how about we get back to some cleaning? Some of the hardest things to clean in the garden are things like clay pots and stonework surfaces, such as bird baths. Salt and water stains can be stubborn, but with a damp cloth and a sprinkle of baking soda, they should come off good as new. This next one requires a little more measurement and you gotta be careful with it. As an alkaline substance that readily dissolves, baking soda can be used to raise the pH slightly of soils that are too acidic. Like we said before, most of our crops prefer a range of slightly acidic to neutral soil, which is about 6 to 7 on the pH scale. For those soils that are too low and starting to become a bit acidic, a small local application of dissolved baking soda can really help. I say small because sodium buildup is still a concern. No doubt, gypsum and dolomite are far more common agents that are used in raising soil pH, and they're usually the go-to solution. But for indoor use or small container setups, well, baking soda sure does the trick in a pinch. Keeping with that soil, our seventh and final use for baking soda in the garden is as a DIY homemade, pretty crude, but effective pH test kit. Now, it can only be used to test for acidity in soils, but it does work and it works pretty fast. Simply obtain a sample of the soil you want to test, liquefy it with about half its volume of neutral water, and then add a tablespoon of baking soda. Neutral or alkaline soils will not do anything. Acidic soils, well, enjoy the show. The combination of baking soda as a moderate base and an aqueous acidic soil gives you a violent, immediate reaction. When combined, acids and bases give off large amounts of carbon dioxide. In a soil solution, the results can be quite spectacular. For an in-depth look at doing this soil test at home, check out the quickie in the top right corner. <laughs> Sometimes products, even inexpensive household ones, punch far above their weight class. Finding safe, effective ways to use them in the garden is a fun way to save money, grow healthier plants, and maybe learn a little science along the way. I know baking soda is always going to have a spot in my garden toolbox. Hopefully you'll find some space for it in yours as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.